Hey everybody, Julie here from Mostly Caffeinated. I was about to delve into some mending projects, some alteration projects, when I thought maybe this would be kind of an interesting video to talk about my like current mending and altering pile. I haven't really ever talked about sewing on my channel because, to be honest, I'm not actually good at sewing. I do, you know, mending and a little bit of, like, I don't know, altering, refashioning. I'll cut some sleeves off or I'll hem something shorter if I need to. But it's not like I ever sew from scratch and that's not really like a, I don't know, big hobby of mine. It's just something I do to avoid buying new clothes or to make the fact that I thrift all my clothes work for me. But I have kind of a pile going on here and some of this is holiday related or like kind of tips or tricks type of thing. So I thought it might be interesting. So here we go. Okay, first I have, I don't know if you can see this, on the back of my chair there's like four pair of pants piled up there. My little boys have just been ripping pants like nobody's business. And I wanted to talk for just a second about how I patch pants. Now, <laughs> I used to struggle with this. I used to mend my husband's pants when we first got married. Um, we were still in college, so we had kind of a kind of a grunt work job, and he had to wear a uniform. But I didn't want to rebuy, you know, these specific kind of pants. He only wore them to work, and it didn't really matter if they were patched at work. But I didn't want him to look, you know, super grungy. So I would try to patch these pants. I would try to make the patch mat like blend in. I would try to use, you know, really small stitches and stuff to try to hide the fact that it was patched. And that was a lot of work. And so when my boys started ripping pants, I'm like, I can't patch pants all the time. I don't have time for this. And then I read this book. Let me see if I can dig it out over here. It's in my pile of library books. I read this book called Mend It Better, Creative Patching by Kristen Roach. And it was about visible patching, which is something that I've seen on the internet too since then. But it's the idea that your patch doesn't really have to be a secret. Like if you're going to patch, you may as well make it obvious and you can make it something fun or cute. So that's what I do with my boys pants is I, I sew a patch on, but I use like an alternating, like a, like a colorful thread and I make kind of a design out of it. Sometimes I embroider a little bit around the patch or on top of the patch to make it like cute and fun because yes I was taught to embroider by my grandma when I was little um, so here's kind of an example if you will this is one of my six-year-old pair of jeans he blew the knee out so I took a piece of denim it's not even the same color denim but it doesn't matter put it over the top of the hole and sewed around it um, in you know, like a half circle shape. And then I turned it into a sun. This is all embroidery stitching. None of this extra stuff was necessary to hold the patch on. It's just to make it cute. Like, yes, I know there's a patch. Let's make it obvious. He blew out the other knee of this pair of pants. And he said he wanted another sun on the other knee. So I'm going to have to replicate that patch there. Um, another pair I did kind of has some like red circle patterns almost kind of a mandala type of thing, or like a henna design made out of red circles covering up some holes. Um, I did one that was just a square patch, but then I embroidered like plus signs all over it. I did one that had stars or polka dots or something. Sometimes I put the patch on the inside, sometimes I put it on the outside. Kind of depends what design I'm going to make out of it and like how bad the hole is and things like that. So I've got a bunch of patching to do, like creative patching. And then I've got some minor holiday alterations. Uh, my boys usually keep a suit all year long, so for Christmas they just wear the suit and a tie and a shirt, and that's fine. But my little girl and I usually have some kind of holiday dress. I don't buy a new holiday dress every year, obviously. That's not the way that I use my wardrobe. <laughs> um... I usually wear something that I already have in my wardrobe and I just wear, you know, bigger jewelry or do my hair fancy or something to try to jazz it up. But I happened to buy a piece this year that I just bought to wear and I have worn it several times, but I also want to wear it for the holidays, for Christmas and parties and things like that. And it is, this is going to be hard to see on camera. I'm just going to tell you right now because it's black. 
but it is like vintage motherhood maternity. You could that is not the current motherhood maternity logo, um, and it's black velvet. Let's see if I can get it in the light a little bit there, and it's like a short dress or a very long tunic, and it's got like an empire waist with a tie. I don't usually wear maternity tops or dresses that are, you know, tie dependent or really empire waist. I prefer like a bodycon maternity look, but this is super cute. And I really liked the velvet. I always have loved velvet for the winter. I'm a 90s child at heart. But the problem with this, I mean, problem, problem. I think I paid like $2 for it. The problem with this was the neckline. Now you can't really see the neckline. Let me try to help you. It was kind of a scoop neck. I have it pinned up right now, right here with some safety pins, but it was too low for me. Anyway, um, I don't like low necklines and it's winter. Why on earth would I want my chest exposed? And you know, like when I, when I leaned over to do things, it just, it was not functional for me. So what I've done recently, I've been wearing it. I've kind of gathered up a bunch in a big safety pin with the pin on the inside. So it's got these kind of cute gathers up here at the top of the collar to see if that was a functional way. Could I wear it all day like that? The answer is yes, I can, but it pulls the umpire waist up a little bit too far for my bust size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these gathers. They don't start until the, the top seam here. I'm going to move them. So they're centered over the top of the shoulder and do the same amount of gathering and just sew the gathers together instead of holding them together with a pin. And it'll be a little bit gathered up here at the top. That's kind of a festive, cute look. And the neckline will be more appropriate, how I like it to be. And then this will be my, my holiday go-to. It's long enough to look like a dress so I can wear it to church or other fancy functions. But it can also read as a tunic. Um, so I could throw on more casual leggings or like a funky sock and wear it to holiday parties. So that's my holiday alteration for myself. And then for my little girl, she is one and a half. I always buy her like a Christmas dress um, just because it's fun to do. And I always get them at a consignment shop for kids where everything is like three, four dollars. So I don't feel that bad buying it. And I do have her wear it, you know, for more than just Christmas. It's not a one day situation. Um, and I picked up this set for three and a half dollars. It's a little baby doll coat in plaid. It's not thick, it's just, you know, one layer of plaid fabric with little velvet buttons and a little velvet collar. And then underneath, there's a little baby doll dress in that same velvet, short sleeves. It's got a little velvety bow detail here. And it came with a little plaid bloomer to put underneath. I thought that was cute and it's, like three separate functional pieces. She has a plain black dress that she could wear with the coat and the bloomer. Oh, it's got, it's got this sweet little kind of beret too. Um, reminds me a little bit of the American Girl doll, Samantha, with the, the plaid and the hat and the velvet color. She could wear just the dress by itself. She could wear a onesie under the dress, a sweater over the dress. She could wear just the coat around the holidays. And like, I was really drawn to the plaid, and I enjoy the velvet on baby girls, and there's no itchy stuff, there's no taffeta. But this trim is reading very strangely to me, very, like, late 70s, early 80s. This is dating it. I feel like if this weren't here, and it were just a plain black collar, this would be a totally timeless little baby outfit. So in the store, before I decided to purchase this, I was, I was kind of picking at it, kind of perusing and this lace is stitched on top of both the black and the plaid. Like the black and plaid are sewn together and then this is just stitched on top. Now it's not really tacked, it's full up stitched, but it was not, you know, pieced in with the other two fabrics. It's not inside the seam, it's just on top. So I think I can pick the stitching off and take off this little lacy trim and then I'll just have a really nice classic Christmas set. For my baby girl and we'll see if the next baby is a girl and I'll keep it and she can wear it too. There is a little bit of kind of staining. I don't know if I can find it now. It's really not very noticeable. Oh there. But it's kind of white. Oh it's picking up way more on camera. That's 
It's much more obvious than it is in real life. I'm assuming that's candle wax from our Christmas Eve service. That's I've gotten candle wax on things before, and after you kind of try to get it off and try to wash it, this is sort of what's left behind. I don't feel any sort of residue or anything, so I don't think there's anything I can do to make this better. Maybe scrubbing will do a little bit, scrubbing with some you know, spray and wash or something. But this is probably twice as noticeable on camera as it is in real life. It's really very hard to see. And on an 18-month-old who's moving around, I don't think you're going to notice that little candle wax stain. So I'm going to pick that off, and then it'll be just, just what I wanted for her. So there is my mending and alterations pile for the holiday season. We'll see if I can get through all that. I think I'll start with the Christmas items just in case. <laughs> my boys have been scraping by on pants, even with the ones with holes piling up behind me. So I'll start with our Christmas items and maybe I'll post a picture on Instagram or something if I get them done so you can see what they look like. I don't think I want to do a whole nother video of like, here's the thing I fixed. Here's another thing I fixed. That doesn't seem very interesting. But maybe over on Instagram, you can find my, my updates of what those things look like. Hope you guys are having a lovely fall. Maybe, maybe that it is fall by you. It's pretty much winter here. Um, getting ready for Thanksgiving next week or Christmas next month. Hope you're all enjoying your simple living that you're striving for. I'll see you guys later. Bye.